Various fans of the Sarah Jane event she used to be quite hit and miss amongst the fandom, as some fans were much more satisfied with the conclusion of Series 4 being the final end of the show, but nevertheless, after the season was commissioned. Series 5 are going to be a season of darker stories, especially leading to the grand series finale, The Battle of Bannerman Road. But unfortunately, Elizabeth Sladen, who played the iconic Sarah Jane Smith, sadly passed away, so only the first three out of the six episodes were shot. I won't go too into the three of the mid episodes as that'll be a video for another time but the three that we got was great and it's such a shame that the show ended abruptly as we can see what the show was trying to do with a soft revamp introducing the new character Sky. The real saving grace in this half completed series though and I know a lot of you will agree with me on this is the cursed Clyde Langer. As you know before the show doesn't like to shy away from adult topics like dementia, child abandonment or a loss of a friend. This story deals with the topic of homelessness and most importantly runaway children who are out alone on the streets. This story hands down is one of my favourite Sarah Jane Adventures stories so today I'll be going through its important message of how underlooked people on the streets are in The Curse of Clyde Langer. So it begins with Clyde out alone in the rain who makes a direct nod of address to the audience and asks if we remember the day of the storm. Visibly, he's referring to this as if it happened recently, and seeing Clyde alone in the rain begins to give us some concern about the story ahead. It then cuts to perhaps the day before this, and we see Clyde and Ronnie in their sixth form common room. Ronnie is talking about history as she sees a distracted Clyde who's too busy illustrating his new comic, The Silver Bullet. She's impressed at his work but says it's not going to help him pass his history exam to where Clyde says that he has his art ambitions to look forward to when he leaves college and that he hopes to become an art illustrator one day. I love the inclusion of Clyde's love for art and drawing that started originally in series 2's Mark of the Berserker, a previous Clyde-centric story. The drawings themselves will make a very important part of the story ahead. Meanwhile Sarah Jane is getting Sky involved at the school while them and Horatio notice that the sky is raining fish. Which whilst this concept is quite interesting it does not have a lot of significance to the story other than being a plot device to bring the gang to check out the totem pole at the local museum. Yeah sure here get a bacon party or something. Cheers. Why did she want money? Because she's a scrounger. Clyde's slight disrespect to the girl calling her a scrounger even though kind of knowing due to a visually apparent age that it most likely wouldn't be her fault why she's on the streets just shows how some people don't care for or ask questions about the homeless on the streets and may just give them change to believe them alone. Clyde receives a splinter after touching the totem pole and I love how brilliantly underplayed that is with no one, not even Clyde, knowing the true implications of the splinter and what's a refraction it will cause to the group later on. Dr. Malikin informs a group of the legend surrounding the totem pole and that inside lies Hecumtek, a vicious alien god who fell out of the skies and that tried to enslave people. Normal death for Clyde comes to an end as he finishes his silver bullet comic we saw at the beginning of the story before getting ready for bed. Whilst Clyde sleeps though, the camera cuts around his room highlighting his name in artwork and art certificates before the camera abruptly cuts to black. Next morning Clyde pops round to Sarah Jane's house before school to show her the finished comic. After Clyde says his name in a conversation jokingly saying how we'll hopefully be as good as Stan Lee, Sarah very out of character snaps and kicks Clyde out of the home. It's so weird to see Sarah behave like this especially when she threatens to use the sonic lipstick on him if he didn't leave. Stories like this, especially this far into the show, are so upsetting as you know these characters how close they are, so Sarah's hostility towards Clyde was truly heartbreaking. Clyde quite shaken up after this confrontation runs across the road to see Ronnie and Haresh that are also heading out for school. After Haresh says Clyde's name, the same hostility is greeted with Clyde. This proceeds to hurt more than the last one with Sarah as Ronnie exclaims that he hates Clyde. I know that it isn't exactly the biggest insult you could give to someone, but again, this was very out of character for Sarah, so it is for Rani. Clyde's confusion over Sarah Jane, now Rani turning on him, and his unfair exclusion from school by Haresh leaves him hurt and upset as he somberly walks off the street as he effectively is kicked off Bannerman Road. Not ever! The violin score during this composed by Sam Watts that plays during the scene makes it ever more heartbreaking. After some brief unprovoked anger towards Clyde's artwork in the attic, Sarah gives Sky some comforting first day of school talk and says that Rani will be looking out for her 
As the sky says if Clyde will, because of Sarah's deliberate exclusion, she exclaims to have her keep away from him. Sky doesn't know why and also presents the effect of Clyde's curse not having an effect on her. Clyde attempts to call Luke but he turns to him as well. Clyde is then greeted to one of his friends that he hardly sees anymore because of sixth form with Sarah Jane Steve who was last seen in series 2's Day of the Clown. Clyde apologises for the absence and tells him that he can't stay for long for a kickabout as Steve understands he jokingly says he'll put in a good word to a football scout. All seems well until he says his name and him and his rest of his friends turn on him. Clyde now realises that it seems like his name is cursed and Steve smashes up his phone and chases Clyde before he gets away. Clyde notices that his splinter that he got the day before begins to bleed and he remembers about the totem pole so heads back to revisit it. Clyde then tries to ask Dr. Madigan about if there are any myth regarding curses that will make all your friends turn on you before Sarah comes to getting kicked out and because of Sarah's outburst Dr. Madigan remembers his name and gets forcibly kicked out of the museum. Clyde now realises that it isn't just his loved ones that can be affected by the curse, but everyone. Clyde walking through his kitchen to find his mum under the curse as well after reading his name off letters addressed to him was so heartbreaking and the slow pan over to Carla who sat looking over the letters was so eerie and honestly gave me goosebumps. Clyde desperately pleading for his innocence as he knows there isn't a definitive answer as to why his mum or any of his friends have turned him in was so heartbreaking. You can't because it's all a trick. You've all been tricked. You, Sarah Jane, Ronnie, everybody. Yeah, I was tricked all right. Life tricked me the day you were born. I've had enough now and I want you out of here. Out of my life! Honestly, the darkest moment on CBBC. The police come knocking on the door, leaving Clyde no other option but to leave home. This scene, I feel like, definitely hits home for children who are runaways and leave home because of an altercation between them and their family members. <laughs> Score again makes his ever so heartbreaking as Clyde walks through Bannerman Road as he hears echoes of past praises from Sarah Jane and Rani as he walks past Sarah's home and looks across at Rani. Clyde is left with no alternative with no money as his credit card is cursed and with police on him he has no other option but to lay low but with no friends to go to and lay low with Clyde accepts his newfound isolation in the cold rain with no shelter for the night. <laughs> the homeless girl from earlier comes to take Clyde to shelter. Part two begins with Clyde awakening under a bridge to be at some kind of underground homeless shelter and is initially taken back at his surroundings, showing that he's never seen this side of the homeless before. Ellie, the name of the homeless girl who brought Clyde to shelter, brilliantly points out after Clyde apologises for not recognising her, regardless of the fact he gave a change. Is that... I'm sorry, I didn't recognise you. Of course not. People don't look scared they might catch something. Which was some brilliant commentary. As Clyde learns of Ellie's name, he gives an obvious fake one so Ellie doesn't fall under, like all of his loved ones, the curse too. Clyde learns that Ellie's on the streets possibly due to a potential row with her stepdad, which is usually why teens leave homes young, due to parental disagreements. As Ellie tells of the good and bad of sleeping on the streets, she informs of something called the Night Dragon that takes people off the streets. This small subplot was quite interesting and quite actually significant in the ending. Ellie shows Clyde visually that people just walk past her, completely banking her when she's asking for change, as if they're nothing, which was again some brilliant visual representation of the eye view of the homeless. After this, Ellie and Clyde arrive at a food stop for the homeless, and Ellie points out what past careers some people in there have had, just showing that anyone could become homeless. After an unnerving conversation with Mystic Max, Clyde attempts to distance himself from Ellie, as Clyde tells her that he isn't who he says he is. This was obviously apparent from the start, and Ellie knew this, but respects that he might not want to give out his real name. The two proceed to get closer. The story now cuts back to Horesha arriving at home with Rani as she begins to cry but is unsure why as all she knows is that she's certain that she's lost something or perhaps someone but not sure what it is. Sky goes to Carla's house and is experiencing the same thing too to where Sky begins to notice that there's something up with Clyde's name and is determined to <laughs> Thank you. 
Clad in a way to keep himself and Ellie warm, he sadly burns the silver bullet comic, which shows now how selfless he is, showing more respect to the homeless now compared to the beginning of the story. Now having more enlightenment with truly what homeless people deal with on a day-to-day basis. Clyde burning the comic fell off, obviously taking him a long time to do just to keep himself and most importantly Ellie warm was so sweet and further expands on this lovely chemistry between Ellie and Clyde. Back in the attic, Sarah shares the same feeling that Ron and Carla have. With Ron and Sky and with help from her, they are able to free themselves from the curse by repeating his name that appeared to be some kind of mental lock that restrained them from saying it. Clyde wishes to become a street artist that will hopefully help to get him and Ellie off the streets. His determination here was so sweet and it's quite sad that he's now accepted his disarmament from all of his loved ones and knowing of the fact that he'll most likely never see them again. Whilst Ellie leaves to get the two coffees at, to celebrate Clyde's bold venture, Sarah Jane Brown and Sky arrive to where they apologise about their actions but tell them that they've got to go back to the attic ASAP because of Eta Comtech who's now able to free himself because of Clyde still being cursed. Clyde attempts to call out for Ellie but she doesn't hear him and he has no other choice but to leave the gang. This is so heartbreaking as Ellie may forever not know where Clyde went and why and this was definitely an underrated scene for Clyde as he could have stayed and waited for Ellie but Clyde liking the mark of a berserker he knew he had to do the right thing and was to go back and stop Hair Come Tech. Mr. Smith brings Hair Come Tech to the attic and Clyde frees himself from the curse by exclaiming his name, which is the totem pole back and traps Hair Come Tech and the totem pole once more. Clyde reunites with his mom and she gives him a kiss, which was very heartfelt. And Clyde goes back to see if he can find Lily, but later finds that he wouldn't have been able to as her name was also a fake one too. I just can't believe after all the things we've seen, the most alien world of all is right here and no one knows because they don't want some powerful monologue given i think of the entire show and just some brilliant commentary by the writer of the episode phil fordia we find at the end of the episode that the night dragon is actually free transport for the homeless that will take them anywhere they want to go and that there was a new lord that left today so it's most likely that ellie may have left and been in that new lord. The episode ends with Clyde in bed but still wide awake, looking quite somberly at the drawing he drew of Ellie and still quite shook up after the events of the story. Thanks for watching, please leave in the comments below what you think of this episode and if there's any other Sarah Jane story and hell even Torchwood story you'd want me to revisit for a video in the future. Thank you all for watching and goodbye.